Hi there, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. My name is John. Hands together, head bowed. Skippy Limpool. Nice to see you. Welcome to my synthesis series. I'm going to teach, cover, talk, share my knowledge on synthesizer programming in a little bit shorter, condensed, I hope, <laughs> videos than, less than an hour, okay? Um, this video is sponsored by my website, PluginGuru.com. So please come to Plugin Guru. What I'm doing, these videos are free. I'm sharing knowledge. And in return, please come buy libraries for my website. That's how I make a living. And um, for what I'm sharing, I hope that's worth it. So there. Now, we're going to talk synthesis. This first lesson, if you've noticed, is called Monopoly. Do we need both? That's where it all begins. And the the, the crux of this and the start of this was right here. I got an email from a customer. And the question was, what is the appeal of a monophonic sound? I understand that when technology was primitive, there was no choice, but it feels to me like riding a unicycle when a sports car is available. When I come across one I like, I either change it to polyphonic or depending on the VST, layer it with itself a few times. Any thoughts? So, I do have thoughts. <laughs> that customer does not understand the difference between mono and polyphonic. Monophonic and polyphonic are two different modes for the sound. And we need to start there to understand how everything works. Monophonic is just that, mono, one, one voice. And you can use this voice depending on, well, if we're here on the main page in Omnisphere, by the way, I'm going to switch between all sorts of stuff and explain where you find these parameters. And I'll show you the libraries too. Um, that opening demo song, this, that's using Plugin Guru libraries for all the sounds. So we'll cover all that too. We'll do that at the end, okay? I won't bore you now. But we'll, I want, I'm going to do this on all these videos. I make a demo before I make the video. And then I'm going to talk about the sounds. I have so many libraries now that a lot of people get kind of confused with, well, what's on what libraries and can I hear examples? We've got a couple of things in the works that are really cool to help with that. But one of them is in these videos, I'm going to say, okay, this bass sound that you're hearing is from Plugin Guru Omniverse Volume 1 and... There it is. And it's used... It's on the upbeats. It's a big sound, so playing that at the same time as the kick drum, be careful. You don't want to do that, because big sounds and kicks at the same time, that's why you use side chain compression. In the future, we will talk about all that. But we're going to do this. I'm going to go to a sound called Depeche Hammer. And as you can hear, and as you can see, this is solo, and the mode is set to legato, and it has glide and the glide is set to legato. These are the two parameters we are going to talk about in this whole video. Nothing but these two parameters for the most part. I will of course throw in tips as I go along because that's how I work, but this is what we're focusing on is why is there a solo mode? Why is there mono? Why do you need it? Um, wouldn't this just be cool to be polyphonic? Here's where we'll start. Mono means one note, poly means whatever this is set to. In the case of Omnisphere, it can be up to 64, most synthesizers, it's 32. Um, some have limitations of just being monophonic, even though it's a, a, it could be, but they're like simulating an, an older simulation of an older synth. But when it's polyphonic, you can play anything you want. And so keyboards, all that kind of stuff. But why are there mono modes? Why, why do you need that? So we're going to look at that. When you set it to mono, you can't play more than one note. If I play a note, then I play a new note, The first note goes away and it re-triggers everything from the very beginning like I'm playing a new note of the new note even though I'm holding this one down. Now if I set it to legato, what does that do? I'm giving you a second to think about this before I explain it. It's legato. Let me show you what it sounds like.
What's it doing? All that big bright attack, you notice it's gone? Why? Why is it gone? Because when you set the legato button on, when you go over here and you set this to be mono legato inside of Serum, if you go to Spire and you set it to a mono mode of these four types, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, or if you go to Zebra and you go to the global page and right here you can choose between poly, mono retrigger, which is what we were showing where it was playing bright, and legato. Why? Here's legato. This is a sound from Toxic Zebra, by the way. Badass library. Retrigger. Because this is a really bright sound with very little envelope interaction, you won't really hear. That's why I'm using the Depeche bass, because it's got this really strong attack. And when I play notes after that, it's gone. The reason it's gone is because when you set something to legato, it plays through the shape of the envelope once. And from then on, whatever notes you play are going to be right here on the sustain point of the filter and the amp. So if, you're, if you have this to be like a really, let's add and make this really short so it goes down to zero, right? Like, so we have this go away, right? So when I play legato, because sustain is at zero, it's gone. If I bring this up, wherever I set the sustain point, hear that? That's where it rests. That's why I was saying with the zebra patch, it's, it's balls to the wall maxed out. So if something is like this, and you're a... Uh, and if I go to the filter, and if I made this be really bright, the attack is gone. But I was using that really bright attack sound. Hear how the sustain is changing? Wherever I set that resting point, that's where it's going to rest when I play notes after this. Now, you can start to get really, 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 really tricky with this. If you use lock and zoom out and then take this decay point and let's stretch it out for a long time. And let's actually, to really emphasize this, I'm going to bring up resonance. So this filter is now going to be screaming its head off. And it's slowly going down, right? See the shape? Because, well, let's do this. Let's turn off legato mode and it's going down. When I play a new note, it starts over at the top again. Right? Turn on legato and check out the badassness you can make. It's still going down. That's because I have it to legato mode and a slow decay. It's playing that envelope one time like we talked about. My daughter's giving my dog a bath in the bathroom downstairs. <laughs> so if you, never mind. So that is when it gets really interesting. And we're not even talking LFOs and all that stuff, but if you make the decay a long time on the filter and you set something to mono legato, you can do these really cool. Right? It's just going down and down and down. By the way, I started with the default patch of Depeche Hammer so that if you get this library, you can call it up, 
go to this page, watch the video, and recreate this sound. So I want you to have that ability. So that's part of mono, is that you cannot get that effect from a polyphonic. I mean, you get cool sounds, that sweet, you know. It's way overdriven. I, if I wanted, I'm not gonna, well here, I could turn off effects. You know, it's a big synth. And you hear the resonant filter sweep. But even without the effects, I can't get... Then you add the effects, and that's where the balls to the wall sounds come from. We'll do future videos on optimizing effects because I've had 26, 27 years playing with effects inside of synthesizers. So I will share some of that knowledge too. But we're just talking about these two parameters and we're only halfway done. Woo, we got more to go. So Glide. Glide is also called Portamento. Portamento is the sliding from one note to the next note. And it can be legato or it can be constant or Depending on what synthesizer you're looking at here, it's always. If you're over here on Spire, mono one and two are always retrigger of glissando, and three and four are uh, legato of glissando. So that's why they have their four modes here, and they should name them, but they don't. Shame on them. Zebra, uh, it's right here. Here's the difference. So let's turn it on, and let's have this be retriggering, not legato. So every time, and let's get our hammer sound back. In fact, let's go back to default. And let's keep this off from legato for now, so. Okay, now let's turn off legato, which means it's always, which means each time I play a note, it slides. All the really cool rubbery dance tracks where it's, if we go to the filter and bring this down low and actually let's lock this so we can do this to both. All that glidey stuff you hear, that's because of glissando and it's because they have it set probably to always. And I'll show you the difference here in a second. Let me get speed just a little bit brighter. For those of you on little speakers that don't have the ability to play sub frequencies. Right? Legato means there's times where you want it to glide and other times where you don't. So you can go like go. a little bit longer. So depending on the phrase I want to play. So it's gliding like crazy. So by having a legato, I can go back and forth between And you can get all sorts of dance techniques to happen. So clearly, you have to have mono. You need to understand how you can use this. For example, let's go to a synthesizer sound. If you want to do some fun experimenting and programming, choose something, let's say, uh, Bright octave sauce. Nice pad, right? Let's turn this into a noisier lead kind of thing. So if I go over here, first thing we want to do, let's lock both oscillators in honest here. Move the attack. Because envelopes is how you determine, just like poly mono, 
a pad is determined by the basically by the attack and the release parameters. So if I make these short, if you go through my libraries, anything that says synth typically has the faster attack and a shorter release, sometimes a little bit long release. But the pad sounds are always going to have slow attacks and long releases, so you can play pad parts. Also, just so we're clear, in all of my libraries that we've released, done by myself or the other programmers that I've worked with and trained how to program and to name things, most of the base patches will be mono, most of the lead patches will be mono. Then the polyphonic patches will be everything else, the keyboards, unless it says like mono, something like that, okay? So we're taking bright octave saws, and I've taken the attack and the release. Now, let's do this. Let's turn on unison just to make this bigger for a... You would never use it like this for a pad, for the most part, because A, it will kill your computer in polyphony because we're now stacking voices on top of each other. But we're going to go over here and take out all the 24 voices. You can only play one voice because we made it solo. Totally different application, starting with a pad. So just by changing the attack time, the release time, turning on unison, and then setting it to mono, we've gone from a pad. <laughs> That's with unison on, so it's huge. Um, to a mono lead sound. So, the summary for this lesson is that you do need to have polyphonic, monophonic, and you need to know how to set them up. There's times where you're going to want to make a sound that you hear on someone's song, and you need to listen to it and study it to see what they did. And then you can recreate it with the tools. They have the same tools, same parameters as you. All the noisier leads, a lot of times, those big buzzy synth lead sounds come from pads that have been set to mono and then set to where they have glide. Let's turn on glide. Now we have crazy effects. So let's go over here and kill the reverb and delay. And let's quickly look here. Uh, that should be fine. And off you go. So, hope that helps to cover this like that. Um, let's go back here to the bass sound, and I'll show you these sounds used in this demo song real quick. Uh, this was a very bad sign. And this is one of a ton of, this is the first library I did for Omnisphere six years ago. And it's still, the sounds are as cutting edge today. You can use them in all sorts of musical styles. So it's not just one genre. That way you can mix and match to kind of make your own style. And again, taking a pad, changing the envelopes and setting it to mono mode and you've got lead. Okay, so boom, off you go. Uh, there's a bass sound from Serum that I used, which was and it's bouncing put them together then the drums oh wait sorry uh, let's see let's kill the synth part and it's just the two bass parts so this is temple tonk and the bass and the drums Okay, then I needed something to fill it out. And so I went to Spire, which is great at the plucky kind of sounds. This is from a library we did called Future X. I'm gonna pop up the graphic on the screen. There's a ton of trance in your head, buzzy, bright things, and a lot of really cool plucks. And so. So this part has it playing 
and then I have these being modulated. And then right there, I just doubled it and took it down an octave so that it's a bigger pluck sound. I'm playing with parameters over here all the time to vary it. So Okay, so that's three synthesizer sounds and the drums, which are from Super Macho Drums, my drum library that everybody is flipping out over and loving to pieces because you can change all the drum sounds to every drum sound and there's 61 drums. All these kicks and all these snares. And if I want this snare to be at a different pitch, and I want to go through reverb, done. Just to that sound. So it's the fastest editing, funnest interface on the planet for drums. And so there's a ton of videos I have already on YouTube uh, covering this. All right, so that's the basics of it. That's the sounds that were used in the demo song from my libraries. Last thing I wanna point out is at Livestream, and also on the Facebook Plugin Guru page, um, typically every Saturday I do a two hour, hour and a half live stream. And those are all saved and available to come back and watch right here at livestream.com slash plugin guru. And that's where we started this. And I'm sorry to everybody that was at the live stream that we had, it stopped recording like an hour in to the video. And so the whole introduction was gone and lost which is why I wanted to put this into a YouTube video now to uh, help get this knowledge out there and, and get everybody a chance to watch it that missed the first part because they went back to watch it. There's still good information on the live stream, but it didn't cover that much of the monopoly. We got into all sorts of other crazy stuff and saving patches and there's free patches now available to download that we created. It was, we're starting a library in Omnisphere, just so you know. <laughs> there's four patches right now, so it's not many patches and so that will grow over time because as we make more patches with each live stream, I'll add them here. But I'm not doing patch programming per se, I don't think, in the YouTube videos. So, I don't know, we'll figure that out as we go. But, uh, so, that's it. That's it for the first video. Um, again, thank you for your support. Come buy a library from my site and enjoy the knowledge. Remember, it's an instrument and you need to think how you're going to use it. And once you figure that out, then you can start the whole waveforms and oscillators and filters and noise and the effects and envelopes and modulation. And we will get to all that in the future. But the first thing is, how are you going to use the sound you make? What do you want to do? So I hope this helps. Okay. I'll talk to you later. See ya. Bye.